What do you think the greatest gift the Holy Spirit wants to give to the church today? Well, immediately I come back to the nature of the Holy Spirit and the answer is love, to truly love the brethren, to truly build a kingdom of love. True love is so powerful. How can we say no to true love when it's personal to yeah. us? fifth chapter of Romans, it states that the love of God has been poured forth into our hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit. So it seems to me fitting that we reflect on the love of God here at Niagara Falls, the love of God which has been poured forth into our hearts. You can literally hear the roar. God's love is the deepest desire of every human heart. Whether or not you know it, whether or not I'm aware of it, we desire God's love, and we desire that love to fill the emptiness of our heart. No matter where we are, no matter what our situation, that love of God which can satisfy and can renew. Only the Holy Spirit can pour forth God's love. You see, God's love is different than any other love. It's unconditional. It's perfect. It's satisfying. There's no end to it. There's actually, there will be a day when the water will no longer flow over these falls, but there will never be a day that the love of God will not be poured forth into our hearts. Sometimes when I'm praying and just asking about, Lord, Lord, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to preach about? I'll get the sense that the Lord will want me to say and speak about God's love. And sometimes it's like, well, God, I mean, everybody knows that. Have you never heard that God loves you? I mean, everyone's heard that. Everybody has heard that God loves them. But I'll be quiet and the Lord will say, just. Just tell them that I love them. I don't know, maybe I was a doubter. You know, I had seen it, I had witnessed it. So I believed, but I, or maybe I accepted, but I don't know that I truly, totally believed. And then just recently, I really gave myself to God after conversations with you. Yeah. And I had my doubts, but I, I, for really the first time in my life, I said, okay, God, I'm just gonna give it all to you. And I really allowed him to come in to me, and he did. And it was a just this sense of total love and fulfillment. And I just felt in a very good place. And I don't know that I ever really surrendered myself. I, I, I'd say I'm surrendering, but then the next thing I'm doing is thinking about work, or yeah. I'm thinking about this. This time, I really didn't think. I just gave it to God and asked God to come into my heart. And I could just feel his presence. It was like somebody's hands were on my shoulders. He was just there. And I think one of the last things I said was, I believe. I mean, I think I mentioned that to you and some other people. I knew he was real. So I remember one time I was preaching. I was just preaching about that, about the nature of God's love. that that there's nothing that you could do, there's nothing that I could do that can cause God to love me more, there's nothing that I can do that can cause God to love me less. It's unconditional that God doesn't, doesn't wake in the morning and say, hmm, I, I think I'm gonna love. God is love, huh? Uh, Father Contula Mesa, the papal preacher, he said if we could put the, the entire scripture in three words, it would be God is love. So I remember one morning I was preaching about that. I was preaching about the love of God that, that just changes us. And, and it gives us meaning and it gives us hope in the midst of whatever we find ourselves. And I remember at the end of the mass, there was a woman and she was walking up towards me and, and she was crying. And it's like, she always know you've given a good homily if somebody's crying, huh? And she was crying and she comes up to me and she looks at me and she kind of points her finger at me. And she says to me, Father Dave, you're wrong. God could never love me and she walked out of the church. I was convicted at that moment that I could never miss an opportunity to speak about the love of God because not everybody knows the love of God and we need to be able to hear that and, and to be able to experience that. I was actually at a conference that was charismatic and I'd never experienced that before. 
and to be honest, uh, you know, there were people, some were like crying, some were having very dramatic experiences, and I didn't feel anything like that. And I looked around thinking maybe I'm missing out on something. But what was really more profound than any exterior, like super emotional thing was just what the Lord was doing in my heart. I just felt a sense of freedom and peace and, and really intimacy, you know? And I would say that understanding of the Holy Spirit being someone who loved me. I never thought of the Holy Spirit loving. You know, I always just thought of the Holy Spirit kind of flying around or, you know, being like the power of God or something like that. But just the sense that, that you know, Jesus died on the cross, God died on the cross. You know, that though it was Christ, you know, the second person of the Trinity, you know, who died on the cross, the love of God is so profound, I'm sure they fought over it. You know, like who gets to do this? And it's a sign of the entire love of the Trinity. And when I started to see the Holy Spirit like that, um, the, my, the whole way, my whole Christian faith just was really transformed. I remember uh, when I was younger, my older brother, he kind of wandered away from the Lord and stopped going to church. And, you know, I would pray a lot for him. I'd pray a lot that, that God would just bless Jim and they would bring him back to the church. And, and, and I would pray literally over many years that God would, would just bring my brother back to the church and, and bring him back to him, huh? bring him back to a relationship with him. Well, I remember we were getting closer to my ordination and I just prayed consistently that God would bless all the people that came to my ordination, but particularly my family and, and, and my older brother, Jim. I'll never forget the morning of my ordination. I, I walked in and, and I was on the altar and, and I looked behind and, and my brother was like in the second row, he was off to my left and my brother was weeping. We just started the liturgy and my brother was, was crying. And, I mean, it was, it was, you had to see your older brother sitting there crying. It was pretty powerful. And Well, the next day we had my first Mass, and I begin the Mass in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the Lord be with you. And I look out, and my older brother Jim, he's, he's weeping again. So the next day, it was Monday morning, and we had Mass at a Franciscan friary, and it was just my family. And, and I remember during the homily, I, I just asked my family, I said, what's this been like for you? And once again, my older brother was just, there were just tears that were rolling down his cheeks. And, and my brother says, you know, Jeannie and I, his wife, he said, for the last couple of years, we've been saying something's missing in our life. There's just something missing. And, and through his tears, he said that I had forgotten that there's a God who loves me. There's a God who loves me and he wants me to be in relationship with him, and he wants me to know him. And, and the love of God was poured forth into my brother's heart, and, and it changes him. You see, that's the thing, the love of God changes us. It, it frees us, it restores us, it, it fills us, it satisfies us. I have a hard time giving things up to God. I give them up, but I kind of hold on, you know, like worries about my children or whatever. And I said, other than being struck by lightning, and I, I was being, you know, flippant. Careful. Uh, right, exactly, because uh, I was probably within a couple of feet of being struck by lightning that evening during adoration. And God said, all right, you want to see? Let me show you. I had an experience recently. I, I, I had the opportunity to go to China. And I met this one woman in China, and uh, she just shared with me her story. And she said that she was an only child as is most of the people in China, most of the young people in China. And she was raised in a family where her father and her mother always told her that there was no God. So her entire existence was, there is no God. I, I just can't imagine what that would be like, that, that God was not part of her horizon. It, wasn't, it just wasn't a part of her life at all. Well, in high school, she began to ask herself a question. What is the purpose and the meaning of life? I mean, when I was in high school, the questions I was asking is, I wonder who's gonna be the quarterback for Notre Dame this year. I wonder if they're gonna go undefeated. I mean, she was asking questions like purpose and meaning of life. Well, when she went to college, she began to study art. She figured that art would give some kind of purpose to her life. You can look at a beautiful piece of art and it can evoke something in you, it can, a sense of meaning. Well, she told the story that, that one day she was looking at this beautiful piece of art and she heard in the back of her mind, um, art cannot give purpose, art cannot give meaning, art cannot feed the poor. And her first thing was like, where did that come from, huh? 
But then she began to think about that. And she talks about how, like everything that she had thought that the art was gonna give purpose and meaning, it was all being taken away from her. Well, she tells the story that she was walking by a Catholic church. She had never actually been in a Catholic church before. And she walked into the back of the church and written on the side of the wall of the Catholic church was, God is love. Now she didn't know exactly what that meant. She didn't know that God was her father. She didn't know the saving work that Jesus Christ had done for her. She didn't understand that Jesus, out of love for her, gave his life for her. But she looked at that and she said, if that's true, if God is love, that's what I'm looking for. That's what's gonna satisfy. That's what's going to be able to give meaning. The next day she made an appointment and went and met with the priest. And now she's a faithful Catholic because the love of God literally was poured forth into her heart. That's an experience that God wants you to have. He wants me to have it. And I love to be able to preach about it. A love that gives meaning and a love that gives hope and, and, and love that's so personal and, and it's so intimate. A love that knows everything about us. When I was about seven years old, <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's great. I grew up in my mom's prayer group and at that time, um, they were having a seminar on the Holy Spirit. And, and it was a at the time that there were a couple people who prayed with me. And, and while they were praying with me, I just had the sense of a real presence of God because I felt love, like a love that is so intimate. I've never experienced that before. And it's, and it's like this, this God who created the world, who created time and space, who created me and created so many people, loves me. And it was like a wow experience for me. It's like, it's like, wow, you really love me? Like, you really love me? I mean, it was like, as a kid, that was, that was an experience like that, that God is real, that God loves me. And, it, and it was so like, intimate. And it sounds like God was personal. Yes, yeah. and God was so personal. And that, and that I felt that He filled, you know, my heart's, you know, my heart's uh, longing for that kind of love. I remember there was a student that I met one time and, and, and she and I just kind of met and began to talk and, and I began to speak about this, that, that God loves her no matter what, that God loves her. And I remember she says to me, Father Dave, you don't know what I've done. Now, I've worked a lot with young people, so I've got a pretty good idea what she's done. And she says, you have no idea what I've done. You talk about God's love, but you have no idea what I've done. Well, I began to hear more of her story. I mean, tragically, when she was a teenager, her mother died. I, I can't imagine what that would be like. And she said in the midst of that, her, her life just kind of began to unravel. And, and she began to make decisions that, that she wished she wouldn't have done. She said, she said, I ended up doing things that I promised I would never do, but she goes, my life just kind of became a mess. Into that, I would speak into that, into that mess, and I would speak the love of God into that, and I would talk about a God who loved her unconditionally, a God who loved her perfectly, a God that, that, that is able to forgive and move past those things that she's done. Well, one of the times we were talking, she was kind of fidgeting with this penny. And we're just talking and she was looking and, and fidgeting with the penny. A couple of days later, I get a note that she places under my door. Father Dave, I was thinking about that penny I was playing with the whole time we were talking. The pennies go through a lot of stuff too. They get passed from person to person and they get dropped in the mud and they get stepped on but no matter how dirty and beaten up they get, their worth stays the same. You know, some pennies have an easy life because they're all shiny, but then you get the black ones and you know that they've been through a lot. It's just like people. Some of us are shiny and some of us are dirty and beaten up. I feel like I'm one of those dirty pennies in the gutter, but you pick me up, you brush me off, you showed me that I have worth. You told me a lot about a God who loves me, who doesn't want me to hurt or hate or to be angry. And for the first time, I'm starting to think 
that maybe that could be true. The love of God has been poured forth into our hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's a love that's, it's, it's a love that's so personal. It's a love that's so intimate. It's a love that can satisfy. St. Francis said, Oh God, you are enough for me. He didn't say you're everything for me, you're enough for me. When we experience the love of God and that love of God is poured forth into our heart, finally we can say that's enough, that, that this is what's gonna satisfy, that, that in the midst of my mess, God makes something new, he makes something beautiful. In the midst of my darkness, he becomes my light. In the midst of my despair, the love of God becomes my hope. And this love of God is to be experienced by us. It's not just something we hear about or read about. Rather, it's something that becomes so personal and intimate that we experience it. And when we experience the love of God, we know. I mean, we know that we've experienced the love of God because something changes in us. Something comes alive in us. When I said yes to the Lord, I remember that it was like saying yes to letting whatever God wanted to do in my life. And it was just immediately, the second I just said that yes, you know, kind of gave that, that okay, do whatever you want to do. Um, I, I just had this incredible feeling of God's love. That's the only way I could describe it, just being completely surrounded by God's love. God loves me and God loves me. And I don't have to, I don't have to do something for God to love me. I can just accept how God loves me. Um, and that was just such a freedom of always viewing my life in comparison to others or judging the things I was doing or being really scrupulous about it or, or doing these other things. And just having that experience was really amazing. Have you ever experienced that kind of love? The kind of love that gives purpose and meaning, the kind of love that changes, the kind of love that renews and restores, that, the kind of love that the scripture says makes all things new. Have you experienced that? Here's my invitation for you this week. If you've experienced that love, then bless the Lord and thank God for just the great blessing that that is. But my invitation for you is to be able to take some time just to be quiet and to be still. If you've experienced that love before, well then ask to be able to receive that again. But if you've never experienced that love, if you've never experienced that personal nature of God's love, my invitation for you is, is to take some time just to be quiet, just to be still, where you're uninterrupted, where, where you're gonna have a couple of minutes by yourself, and just stop. Take a breath. And just ask that the Holy Spirit would pour forth the love of God into your heart, and, into the mess, into the anger, into the frustration, into the fear, and that, and that that love of God would bring forth a peace and a presence, that the love of God would bring forth a joy. The love of God would, would stir something in you that's going to cause you to go and tell somebody. You'll never believe what happened. Now, sometimes that that happens immediately, and sometimes it just takes a little bit of time that, that we need to consistently go before the Lord and say, Lord, pour forth your love into my heart. But I think he I know, I know that he wants to be able to do that. He wants you to be able to experience the love of God. Finally, I love what Pope Francis recently said. When he's speaking about the love of God and the Holy Spirit, Pope Francis says, you can follow a thousand catechism courses or a thousand spirituality courses or a thousand yoga and Zen courses and all of these kinds of things. But none of this will be able to give you freedom. Freedom is a child of God. Only the Holy Spirit can prompt your heart to say, Father. Only the Holy Spirit can open your heart to the love of God. Let's pray. Let's take a breath. Yeah, come Holy Spirit. Lord, that you would, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you would pour forth your love into our hearts. Lord, fill the emptiness of our heart or, or that longing, that deepest longing of our heart. Lord, by your Holy Spirit, soften our heart. Lord, take away fear. Your scripture says that perfect love casts out all fear, that your perfect love would take away all the fear that, that, that paralyzes our heart. Lord, by your love, take away the shame, the, the shame that always causes us to think that, that because of the stupid things that we've done that you could never love us. Lord, 
Renew in us the power of your love. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill the hearts of your faithful. Enkindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your Holy Spirit, and we shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit Amen. Holy Spirit, come. 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 Spirit come Oh Spirit come